All right, welcome everyone to the Home Visiting System in Kansas. Uh, like uh, Krista said, uh, my name is Carrie Aiken. Um, I am a team manager, so I oversee a lot of our HL local programs um, that we fund at the Kansas Department of Health and Environment in the Bureau of Family Health. Um, those include our Title V Maternal and Child Health, uh, which is one of the programs we will uh, talk about today. Um, specifically our universal MCH home visiting. Uh, we also have our Title X uh, reproductive health and family planning, uh, a couple state funded pregnancy and teen pregnancy programs, and then our maternal infant early childhood home visiting program, um, also known as McV. So uh, just a little um, agenda, uh, if you will, for today. Um, first, I'm going to go over some acronyms. Um, we tend to use a lot of acronyms, so I wanted to give kind of a, um, a, an overview of um, all of the terms. Um, we'll be discussing our funding streams uh, for all of our home visiting programs that I'm going to be talking about today, um, as well as then um, our review of our universal home visiting model um, that is underway uh, currently. So first off, uh, some of the acronyms um, that we, we tend to use a lot um, include our Early Head Start as EHS, Healthy Families America. Um, I'm gonna be referring to MCH home visiting a lot um, today. Uh, that of course means maternal and child health home visiting. Um, you can see there, there's our McV, uh, parents as teachers, uh, Tiny K, and then our TIES uh, program. So in Kansas, we have eight home visiting models. Um, for this presentation, I'm actually going to only be talking about six of those programs. So our McV evidence-based home visiting models includes our Early Head Start, Parents as Teachers, Healthy Families America, and then a promising approach, uh, which is over on the, the right hand side there under a, a specialized home visiting um, is called TIES, teen, Teams for in, Infants Endangered by Substance Abuse. And then I'm also going to be talking uh, today around our universal home visiting, um, as well as our Tiny K Infant Toddler Services. Um, I also dropped a link in um, the slide that um, takes you to the Kansas Home Visiting website. So if you haven't checked that out, uh, be sure to check um, the Kansas Home Visiting website out. So first, uh, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about the different funding streams for um, some of our home visiting programs here at KDHG. So the maternal child health home visiting funding um, comes from multiple funding streams, uh, one of which is the, uh, excuse the typo, uh, the Kansas Children's Cabinet uh, in Trust Fund. Um, so in 1999 legislation, um, during the legislative session, uh, the Children's Initiative Funds uh, was created to support programs promoting the health and welf welfare of Kansas children. About 95% of the state's portion of that tobacco master um, settlement agreement is dedicated to improving the health and well being of children and youth in, in Kansas. Uh, we also receive some state general funds uh, that support that program. But the largest portion of our funding comes from our Title V, uh, which is the nation's oldest federal and state partnership. It was enacted in 1935 to improve the health of women and children during the Great Depression. It is a block grant program that was transformed in uh, 2015 to what it is uh, today. It is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, under um, HRSA, or the Health Resources and Services Administration, in the Maternal and Child Health Bureau under the Division of State and Community Health. Our McV funding, or our Maternal Infant Early Childhood Home Visiting, is also part of um, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the, the HRSA um, Health Resources and Service Administration, but it's also in partnership with our Administration for Children and Families. It's in the same bureau as our Title V, 
but our division is um, a little different. You'll see there it's from the home visiting and early childhood systems um, division. Our last program um, that I will be uh, going over today is going to be our Title V um, funding, or excuse me, our Tiny K funding. Um, it is from the United States uh, Department of Education under the Office of Special Education Programs. They also receive some children's initiative funds from the children's cabinet and then some state general funds. So home visiting programs in Kansas. So this is where I'm gonna talk a, a, a bit more about each of those programs. So the first one is going to be our, our Title V Universal Home Visiting. So the mission of our Kansas Title V Maternal and Child Health Program is an integrated delivery of services to our MCH populations, providing services to families and children in a variety of settings, including implementing home visitation services. The purpose of our home visiting program is to provide education, assist with community uh, resources and accessing systems of care, and then initiating resources um, and referrals for additional uh, services. The MCH program is a strengths-based model. It's connecting families with infants to resources that they need to create a safe and stable nurturing environment. Families receive individualized services before, during, and after pregnancy. The frequency of their visits um, and the duration of the services really depends on that family's needs. Our MCH home visitors act as that bridge for families to reach their parenting goals by sharing information and connecting them to community-based resources, services, and additional supports where needed. Some of the core goals of our MCH home visiting program is to serve as that safety net uh, for every expectant and new mother uh, to receiving an outreach or an outreach or an intake visit. It's to increase our socio-emotional um, well-being by connecting with supportive professionals who screen and assess the needs of um, the family. And then the third goal is really to coordinate those referrals to additional services in the community, including early intervention some concrete supports, uh, childcare, and then our other early childhood um, home visiting and family programs. So currently our MCH home visiting um, can serve um, the following populations. So you can see pregnant women, mothers, and then infants up to one year. So again, it's a short term uh, program. Uh, the program also works as part of the core MCH uh, funding that uh, local agencies receive, uh, which is really to support that healthy pregnancies, um, improve birth outcomes, and then promote healthy infant development. The program is universal in approach, meaning it is available to all without eligibility requirements. It's meant to be short term meaning that either the family doesn't require additional um, services or they are referred to the more intensive case management um, and evidence-based long-term home visiting um, services, such as our parents as teachers, Early Head Start, Healthy Families America, and then for those uh, kiddos with developmental delays into our Tiny K program. Home visiting services are also intended to help increase the knowledge and the positive impact behaviors, such as increasing the number of women accessing early and comprehensive health care before, during, and after their pregnancies. Some core essential functions of a home, um, an MCH home visitor is to uh, screen for risk factors. Uh, provide assistance to families by linking them to resources in their communities, as well as uh, providing referrals for supporting um, the family with navigating um, access to other healthcare systems, 
um, as well as coverage in their communities. So really that MCH program um, is part of that continuum of care in that community. Like I mentioned before, um, MCH Home Visiting is part of our larger Title V Maternal and Child Health Program. Uh, this is just a, a quick little snapshot of the uh, Title V State Action Plan for the next five years. And I just wanted to show um, a little bit around uh, the perinatal and infant domain and that infants and families have support from strong community systems to optimize infant health and well-being is, is the priority uh, for this population. And then um, some of the uh, objectives that we hope to work towards uh, are related to safe sleep practices, uh, breastfeeding, um, uh, partnering in our uh, with our Kansas Perinatal Quality uh, Collaboratives, um, as well as increasing our pregnant and post women, postpartum women who are receiving uh, universal home visiting services. So I just wanted to outline um, all of the uh, Kansas uh, Title V um, priorities. So there are eight. Um, and each one is assigned a population that um, it refers to. I'm not going to read them. You can go into more detail um, reading them if you would like. And I'm happy to share um, the state action plan um, if you would like um, more information about that. So this is a copy of um, our map that we utilize um, at the uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment for our maternal and child health, um, as well as our home visiting programs. So you can see there are uh, different symbols on the map. Uh, the blue stars are those that uh, receive funding from us at KDHE to provide home visitation services, as well as the general maternal and child health services in their community. In the lower right-hand corner and then up in Wyandotte County are uh, the current uh, McV Maternal Infant Early Childhood Home Visiting Programs in Kansas. So we've got two communities. And then the, um, the purple uh, diamond is our perinatal community collaborative prenatal education programs utilizing that Becoming a Mom program um, that all uh, community partners um, are able to refer families uh, who need some additional prenatal education courses. You can also see we have a lot of gray counties in Kansas. Um, the, those represent that they um, do not receive maternal child health funding, um, as well as they do not provide um, uh, the Black Stars actually do not provide home visitation services as part of their MCH grant. So lots of work um, that we have to do to help expand um, and enhance our universal home visiting programs in Kansas. So the next program is going to be our um, MCV program. So the, the Maternal Infant and Early Childhood Home Visiting Program gives pregnant women and families, particularly those um, who are considered high risk, the necessary resources and skills uh, to raise children who are physically, socially, and emotionally healthy and ready to learn. So in Kansas, uh, McV, the MCV program targets two high need communities currently. Uh, that is our Wyandotte County, and then our rural Southeast Kansas, um, which includes five counties, Cherokee, Labette, Montgomery, Neosho, and Wilson counties. Um, they utilize um, evidence-based home visiting practices that are already established in those communities. We also have a promising approach, um, which is our TIES program. Uh, the McV program supports pregnant women and parents of young children who live in those communities that face greater risk and barriers to achieving the positive maternal and child health outcomes. 
Family cho families choose to participate in home visiting programs and they partner with health, social service and child development professionals to set and achieve their goals that will help improve their health and well being. The McV program um, also supports the pregnant women and uh, children uh, to, to really achieve those positive um, outcomes. McV aims to improve maternal child health, to prevent child abuse and neglect, to reduce crime and domestic violence, to increase family education level and earning potential, to promote child development and readiness to participate in school, and to also connect families to needed community resources and supports. The McV um, program also has six statutorily defined benchmark areas that we um, have to show improvement on. Uh, so improvements in the maternal and newborn and child health, prevention of child injuries, child abuse and neglect, and maltreatment and reductions in emergency room visits, reductions in crime and domestic violence, improvements in the family economic self-sufficiency, as well as improvements in the coordination and referral for community resources and, research, uh, and supports. Tiny K is gonna be our last program um, that I'm gonna talk about. And it was established um, federally as part of um, the Part H, uh, which is now titled the Part C um, of the Individuals with Disabilities um, Education Act or IDEA in 1986. It was, it's to provide incentives to states to develop a system of coordinated, comprehensive, multidisciplinary interagency programs of service for services for infants and toddlers from the ages of birth to three years of age and their families. So I talked earlier about the continuum of, um, of care and home visiting is set up in a way um, very similar to this pyramid. So if we start at the bottom, the universal home visits or what we refer to as our MCH home visiting is to serve more families with less intensity. So less frequent, uh, typically one prenatal, one postpartum visit, and then families who need additional services are referred into that next layer of the pyramid, uh, which falls into that um, evidence-based um, case management care coordination services, uh, such as your parents as teachers, Early Head Start, Health Families America. And then for those families who have kiddos um, that need some more intensive um, services uh, because they are at a higher risk, for instance, for developmental delays, um, then are referred to in that top of the pyramid, which is the infant and toddler program. And so families are able to flow between um, the, the different home visiting programs um, simultaneously. So you, you can be part of a parents as teachers um, program and still receive infant toddler services. Uh, for your kiddo, as well as still connecting with your um, MCH home visitor who maybe is, who referred you in to parents as teachers. Um, this picture really depicts um, the flow that families should um, be sent through all of the different home visiting programs. So it doesn't matter what door they, um, they come into, uh, they're really connected to the home visiting program that really fits their needs and their family's needs. And then those families are then referred to additional services like clinical care for their preventive visits, um, family planning uh, to receive, you know, contraception um, and uh, birth spacing 
um, reproductive life planning, uh, WIC uh, into the, the health department to get them WIC services, um, as well as our prenatal education parenting uh, program, um, and then some smoking cessation um, programs as well. I've also dropped a copy of um, the All In for Kansas Kids in the uh, files portion out on the Pathables website, um, along with the, a copy of this presentation uh, where you can access all of the links. Um, so this really um, helps to identify that universal home visiting model that we have here in Kansas, um, as well as the need um, of the, the universal approach and the impact that it can make. And because um, this is from the 2020 data, we also included um, some information around home visiting during the pandemic, which you know um, really was um, impacted um, as well as um, is impactful to uh, the families you served uh, during the pandemic. So of course, we always have to pull some data into um, to our discussions. So for our universal home visiting, we utilize DAISY data um, in the DAISY system. So I've um, depicted out there three uh, state fiscal years. You can see that in 2019, before the pandemic, uh, our universal home visiting uh, programs were serving right around um, 6,500 uh, kiddos um, and families uh, in 2020 when the pandemic hit, it went down um, about 1,000 uh, clients. And you can see uh, in this past state fiscal year that just ended in June, um, we had a huge decrease in the number of families that were served. Um, and you can also see that throughout the, the pregnant and postpartum periods, um, the number of families um, also decreased as well. I wanted to pull out some of the, um, the impacts um, that um, are visible in our data. So for our prenatal care initiation rates in that first trimester uh, have really increased throughout the pandemic. So in uh, 2019, uh, they were right around 60, um, 69% of the um, clients that we served uh, were receiving that prenatal education in the first trimester. And we're up to um, 74 now, um, little almost 75% um, who have reported that they are receiving that early um, prenatal education or that prenatal care. Our breastfeeding rates have um, kind of steadied, um, reduced uh, just a little bit, as well as our um, our self-reported um, clients who said that they do not smoke um, has increased. So uh, lower smoking rates um, that have been identified through self-report. We know that based off of our data, only one in nine mothers in Kansas are currently being able to be served through our universal model. And since that model, is a universal in approach, meaning is available to all without eligibility requirements. We have lots of work um, to, to help increase that so that more families are receiving um, services uh, from our home visitors. Which leads us to um, the review of our universal home visiting model. So KDHE has contracted with the University of Kansas Center for Public Partnerships and Research to support the establishment and spread of universal MCH home visiting in Kansas. So they're conducting the reviews in two phases. So phase one includes the review of Kansas experience, capacity, and needs related to the delivery of universal home visiting target population and their demographics. Um, so they really did a review of our current data in DAISY. Um, so like who's being served, 
uh, the description of their services. So the number of visits each client has, um, the, the timing of visits, um, as well as whether they were virtual or in person. Um, they've looked at our outcomes data, as well as the gaps that we're finding in the, in the data. They've reviewed our current Kansas practices. Um, so they've done surveys and interviews. So some of you may have um, participated in some of those surveys. Um, there were currently, um, they interviewed about 10 to 15 um, different uh, local partners uh, to, to get their feedback and input. Um, and they really represented all of Kansas. So we had um, representation from each of the six regions in the state. So step two was really reviewing the literature in the state um, models for that best practice um, that we want to implement for universal home visiting. So um, whether that's um, the design, qualifications of being a universal home visitor, service delivery, um, how we administer and then monitor the program. So we're looking to, um, to, to develop the program goals, target populations, description of their services. So again, that the number of visits that are happening uh, with families, as well as the timings of those visits. Um, we're again going to be looking at um, the differences in virtual versus in-person, um, reviewing that intake and what screenings are being provided during those services, um, the education and topics that are discussed, and then those referral practices that are happening. We're really wanting to align with our other home visiting programs that we have in Kansas and make it an early childhood system as a whole. And that last step of phase one is going to be, they're gonna be developing our recommendations for us to move forward um, in the coming year. So really having that ideal or foundational minimum standards that everyone across the board will, um, will meet uh, for providing universal home visiting in Kansas. Um, it will have the service delivery um, requirements of uh, the program. So again, that number of visits that are to be um, conducted, the types of education content, uh, screenings, referrals, really all of that, as well as professional development for our home visiting staff um, and really a way to evaluate um, how the program is um, at large for the state of Kansas. So during that phase one, um, we had some key takeaways from some of the surveys and interviews that were conducted. So Kansas is, is unique and very well positioned to take um, MCH Home Visiting Program to a more statewide universal model um, or approach, um, which is not the case in a lot of other states that we have researched. At the present, uh, there are considerable variabilities in how MCH home visiting is implemented in Kansas. So it seems um, that local agencies um, have made a few differences in uh, their programs, which is great to fit the need of their community, but it really has made it a challenge um, to say exactly this is what uh, MCH home visiting is or isn't. Um, to really, as a state agency, uh, to provide that support um, at the state level as well as the local level um, and really draw those conclusions about MCH home visiting and their impact. Um, we also noted that um, striking the balance between structure and differences or innovation will be really important uh, when we um, move to our recommendations. Uh, so what needs to be the same across all programs and where can some differences and in innovations happen and take into account 
um, the local community and the local um, needs of families. We've also seen some gaps in, in, our, in our data. So um, it seems that we often think of data is more easily available than it actually is. Um, even the data that's currently collected in DAISY has its limitations. Um, and that can be um, really difficult or a heavy lift to get. Uh, workforce is um, workforce data is actually a huge gap that we have found. We basically um, we don't have any. Uh, we really don't have any kind of system of tracking um, the workforce, and um, so that is something that we are looking to um, to bring um, to this next grant year uh, through our work with the. Um, Kansas Home Visiting Learning Management System. So more will come on that. Um, and that is available to all home visiting programs in Kansas. So outcomes data is another gap that we found. So uh, we know that DAISY has some, um, some limitations and not all of our outcomes um, are part of um, what we would consider our relative, our relevant outcomes. So um, effective referral processes is another gap uh, that we've found. Uh, programs consistently struggle uh, to get referrals into their universal home visiting programs. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of layers that really um, have come out of why we find this gap in the referral processes. So whether it's communications in those communities and with community partners, um, relationships with those partners, um, the lack of understanding from the community of what the program really is and what it does, as well as staff turnover. We know with the pandemic, uh, we have had a lot of staff turnover and um, that's taking its toll on our referral numbers uh, for a lot of our programs. So in its current form, um, it seems that most high risk prenatal or postpartum women's um, are those that are uh, being served. It's um, the need of women um, is there um, or it's at least offered to women. Um, so we really have a big stigma in Kansas of what home visiting is. And so through the work from the preschool development, um, All In for Kansas Kids, uh, we're looking to um, really break down that stigma of what home visiting is in that it should be when you become pregnant, you automatically are referred into a home visiting program, uh, whether that be universal as that um, initial um, to kind of, if you will, triage the family to see what um, the family's needs um, are, and then identifying which home visiting uh, program would best fit those needs. Uh, so it could be that we refer them straight into uh, Healthy Families America, um, or it could be that in their community, there is no other home visiting program. And so that universal program is really all there is, and um, that's where um, they get to step up and fill that gap um, for their community uh, to meet the family's needs. So we've also found that home visitors are not fully trained or onboarded, um, or they have um, ongoing professional development. Um, so really that workforce development um, is something that we're going to work towards in the coming years. Um, and um, it really has left us um, in a place where uh, home visitors feel unprepared um, to go into, um, into homes uh, to serve these families. So we really want to be able to lay that foundation uh, where the home visitors uh, feel supported and um, understand and know uh, what it is that they um, are doing with uh, families. So 
So why are we doing this? So uh, when we finish this review of um, Kansas Universal Home Visiting, um, we really now have a deep understanding of what the Universal Home Visiting Program is and what it looks like in Kansas. But we also have an understanding that the unique and critical role of our Universal Home Visitors um, and what they play, uh, the role that they play in those communities is really impactful. So knowing what's currently happening across the state in terms of um, our home visiting uh, programs can really serve as that foundation for how we move forward. This allows the state, um, us as a state, uh, to take to a, into account what's working well, um, what challenges um, are we facing in our local communities and with our local staff, um, as well as their perspective before we make any changes. So we're looking to get your input, um, your feelings, and what it is that you would like um, moving forward um, in your community related to um, home visiting. We're gonna be continuing to do an ongoing review um, in the process um, of universal home visiting, as well as the impact in the communities uh, to really get a better understanding um, of um, the, the issues that families are facing um, in those communities. So Kansas also has an opportunity uh, to really be a leader in what we want to accomplish through this universal home visiting model. Um, like I mentioned before, um, there are not a lot of states um, in the United States that actually have a more universal um, available to all uh, without eligibility requirements um, for, for families to receive um, the services. So we really have found that um, this is really going to fill that gap for families who do not need the, um, the more intensive services. Maybe they just need you know, uh, one or two visits with a home visitor to really um, get them going um, and then being there if they have any issues along the way after the baby comes. Um, and then we have a lot of families that, that really need um, that constant um, uh, person in their life to help um, with their, their navigating the system um, as well as helping um, with their parenting goals. So what does phase two look like? So um, there are three steps that we're hoping to accomplish in our phase two. Um, we're really looking to facilitate um, the review of our recommendations, uh, first with our state home visiting leadership group, um, as well as in having um, facilitated discussions and uh, really working um, in that decision-making process with our state leaders. We're hoping to develop a web-based implementation guide for our MCH home visiting uh, programs in Kansas, really adopt the recommendations as well as prepare an implementation guide for the use with all our local partners in, in establishing and um, delivering our MCH home visiting services. And then finally, uh, we as state staff um, are here to then support um, the development of those uh, programs as well as the guidance um, and putting out a request for proposal um, by, uh, for locals to help us to review and then offer feedback uh, before we make those final recommendations. So we um, really are looking to you all as our home visiting staff in Kansas to help us along the way. So I've talked about a lot of home visiting programs that we have here in, in Kansas that we fund here at the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. So I just wanted to really open this up and talk how do you um, in your agency refer to other home visiting programs um, when families need additional services. So it could be that you are um, a parents as teachers home visitor, and uh, you maybe are doing some screenings and realize that a kiddo is, is 
having some, some signs of possible developmental delays? Do you refer them into your tiny K programs or their local um, uh, service provider? Kind of what does that look like in your community? Um, so if you would like to unmute um, or um, chat in, sorry, I'm trying to get my mouse here. Do, do you refer to other home visiting programs in your communities? Hello. Hello. We, we're out in, I'm out in Hayes and we have a really pretty good system out here where there's a, a lot of referrals. We were on Iris for a while and that's not working out real good at the moment, but you know, we, we just have had a good system for quite a while to refer to others and we try to communicate with one another when the programs change and stuff. So I, I think we have a pretty good referral system good. overall. Of course, we're not you know, inundated with tons of people like, you know, the E-Star. Yeah. Where was that, uh, Carrie, where was, do you find that statewide Kansas Universal MCH home visiting approach that those two papers, where'd you say you can go to find that? Oh, so on the, um, the conference website, um, you can click under file, I think files, and there should be um, two handouts out there, two PDFs, if you will. And um, the one that's called All In for Kansas Kids um, is going to be that two page uh, flyer um, around universal home visiting. Hi, this is Susan Ridgway, and I'm in okay. Goddard, Kansas. Uh huh. And we did exactly, we do exactly what you said. In fact, I just did this yesterday. We contact, I'm with parents as teachers, and we do screenings on all the children. And we will contact our Part C provider and let them know, hey, we've got a kiddo and we get signed permission from the parents to share information. And we refer that child to more, to I guess you would call a more intensive screening yep. in case they do need that in early intervention. And yep. in turn, our Tiny C also will refer kiddos to our program. So it's kind of a win-win thing because sometimes they get kiddos that have outgrown their system where they no longer need that intensive intervention but yeah. they feel like that family might um, benefit from having some home visiting still continue on. So that works out really good. Good, oh, that's great to hear. Okay, I see a couple of people have their hands up. Michelle Stevenson, you wanna go ahead and unmute? Howdy, I'm here in Fort Scott and I have a program called Fort Scott Early Childhood Program. And it is through the district here. It is early childhood block grant funded also. Um, I have, I've worked closely with uh, the birth to three uh, through Gerard, and so I use the ASQ uh, families, and to me, it is a nice, non-abrasive, non-judgmental approach, because sometimes that can be kind of a touchy, tough thing to take. Um, what are you saying something's wrong with my child you know mm -hmm. and with the asq3 um there's the you know you can clearly show them on paper um this is where your child is showing borderline this is where your child is showing at risk um so we have some wonderful free resources where you can get screened and see if you all need any further resources um so i will do referrals to birth to three that way um, we've also um, teamed up and sometimes we will share a home visit. And so that's been really nice. Um, it lets me know and they, um, we have a contractual relation. So we're able to share the information. They let me know, this is uh, how your child evaluated. This is um, what we're working on with them and our focus with them. And I try to um, connect with our uh, birth to three local home visitor and find out, okay, what I know you're working on this, what can I do to make for better, more solid, more productive visits for you when you come? So I've had them tell me, well, they have a really hard time with focus. Can you work on that in your visits? And so we've worked on that to help make everything more productive. 
Um, I've also had some kiddos that I've come across in doing recruiting that um, because I am only district, some of them I'll come across that are um, Bourbon County, but they're not within our district. And I also have relationships. I've um, forged some friendships with all our early childhood here locally. And so I, I know that the other two entities in town, Parents as Teachers and Early Head Start, also do Bourbon County wide. So I can refer on to those, which is very nice because I don't want I'm, I don't want any kiddo or family to be left hanging. I think anyone yeah. who wants or needs resources should get it. So, and we're, we've got great providers here. So I, I feel very confident referring on to any of our local resources. Good, that's great to hear. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Tina, I see you had your hand up. Sorry, I, I can't see my clock. I don't know how we are on time. So we will go until Krista cuts us off. 14 more minutes. Awesome, plenty of time. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Tina, we're getting okay. some feedback. Uh, the, we, we do a lot with child referral development that, that's here in, in liberal Kansas. And uh, we also have the BAM program. So they work really well with them. We have them come in and let our clients that are doing the BAM classes uh, see her. She talks about child development and stuff like that. So that way they have a face to when we do a postpartum visit that they know that who the person is and who they can trust. So they, we work a lot with them. Sometimes they will come to the office and but we just refer all our postnatals because they can go into the home, they do follow up with the child and then we can refer back and forth if we need to help each other. Absolutely, yeah. Um, doing those shared visits sometimes uh, where you have that one person that you built that rapport and that trust and then that person's introducing uh somebody new helps those fam the family um feel confident and uh trusting in that new individual coming yeah. in great yeah yeah also i had a question uh carrie going back yes. to when you were talking about the, the prenatal home visits when we put in daisy uh on those prenatal visits, when we put them in Daisy and we're doing the education, we've done our referrals. When we put them in Daisy, can we put what trimester they are, or is that only when, when they've seen a provider? So we uh, we currently only collect the um, when they initiated prenatal care. So what trimester they initiated prenatal care? Um, okay. Probably a notes feature at the end. <laughs> You can put, um, you know, that this uh, this client is in their their third trimester, so that if you're going back looking at case notes and stuff, you have an idea um, of when, um, you know, when they're expected to deliver. Yeah, and and Hugh said once you go back in and do another visit, it's supposed to pick it up, but I just didn't know if it did. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Andrea, see you had your hand raised. Sorry, I'm just going in order that I see you on this. <laughs> so if I, if I jumped fine. her up, sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I'm, I'm a universal home visitor MCH for delivering change in Gary County. Yeah. And um, we're kind of unique in the sense that we have a lot of Riley County that comes to Gary, Gary that goes to Riley. And then we also have Fort Riley, the military post here. Um, we do a lot of our referrals through Iris. However, we're in the midst of linking all the different counties because of the crossovers from county to county. Um, otherwise, we would just have to make our referrals verbally to Fort Riley or, or fax or verbally to um, Riley County. But we have a really good system besides Iris. Um, I might be the universal home visitor navigator, but we also have an OB navigator. So once they've delivered, left the hospital, when they have their PEDS appointment and they're breastfeeding, they come into our breastfeeding clinic and then they'll all get introduced and we'll set up a home visit. And then for my home visit, I usually refer on to parents as teachers or for Fort Riley, I do, um, refer on to new parent um, support. So. 
Well, that's great to hear you guys are really building that big community. So it's not just your county, if you will, it's the larger scale um, uh, iris community um, with all of those um, outside your county um, agencies that can really help then support that referral uh, back and forth and hopefully reduce some of the burden of having to do fax referrals or phone calls, um, yes. follow-ups of, you know, were you able to reach that client or do I need to help and assist, uh, you know, to get them um, connected. So well, that's yeah. here you guys are expanding, uh, hopefully um, uh, everything goes well. Uh, through that expansion. Thank you. Okay, Hillary, I think you are next. Hi, thank you, Carrie. Um, so I am a, I'm a teacher of students with visual impairments and okay. I'm, I work with the Kansas State School for the Blind, um, but we have outreach throughout the state and, you know, really can kind of serve any, if a child has a visual impairment, we can serve them, but it seems as though I'm new to our program. Um, and it seems as though we are having a really hard time identifying kiddos that have visual impairments. And, and I don't know if it's because people don't realize that we're available, mm -hmm. um, and certainly, you know, available for consultation, um, available, you know, even, and for home visits, um, I'm seeing, you know, I currently am serving Wyandotte County and we serve Tiny K in Johnson County. Um, but just, I mean, we, we can come anywhere really. And wanting, I guess I'm taking the opportunity to let everyone know that if you have a kiddo that has a visual impairment or even has maybe not an ocular visual impairment, but a a cord, a brain visual impairment, a cortical visual impairment. Like if you notice that a baby is not, they're not doing those looking behaviors that you, but their eyes are fine. Um, we're here to support, you know, investigating that and encouraging um, strategies for helping those babies. And, you know, we, we can come anywhere and we, we want to help. It just doesn't, we don't get very many referrals um, and it's a low incidence population, but if a baby had like a traumatic birth that you know of, and it, sometimes like those hypoxic events, those can be related to cortical visual impairment and we can help with that um, and help to identify those things. And so I just wanted to put it out there to everybody that if you suspect a baby has a visual impairment, we're here to help at the Kansas State School for the Blind. And you can, you know, we're, we're funded through, you know, the Department of Health and Education. It, I mean, everything, you know, we're, we're here for the state of Kansas. And we just, we want to help. <laughs> so Hillary, that, let me move my slide here. Let's see, here's my contact information. Hillary, if you to share with me like if you guys have like a flyer or if you have like an email um i don't know template of everything that you just said uh i can share that amongst all of our uh provider networks okay. that um if, then maybe you're going to be like super inundated with uh, you know what we'd rather that be the case the we, we yeah. want to i we want to help we want to find these babies when awesome. they're babies um, and not when they get to school, you know, to kindergarten and like they've, they've missed all that. That's what we're here for, right? <laughs> absolutely. That early childhood years. Yeah, but absolutely, Carrie, I can do that. And I appreciate your um, help in that. Absolutely. Willing to Thank share you. and spread the word uh, yes. as much as we can. Yeah. So I won't take any more time. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, Regina, I think you are next. Hi, Carrie. Um, I just have a question regarding the referrals that we get. Sure. We do uh, we do receive uh, refer referrals from healthy families, and I guess they're just one year. And I like that they have already been in the program. So when we receive them, they're you know they know what a home visit is. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I, I think most of our referrals are from successful connections. I mean, I'm not the coordinator of the program, but um, do you guys uh, um, are connected with successful connections? So, so not every, uh, so yes, I hear what you're saying. So in Wyandotte County, uh, you guys have. We're from Topeka. Oh, you're from Topeka. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like a, a centralized place for referrals is what you're referring to? Yeah, that is successful connections who we get them from. And of course we receive them from our website and by word by mouth and stuff like that. But I guess yes. high percentage is from successful connections. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I would definitely uh, open the floor to other uh, home visitors, um, but I just off the top of my head, I would think a lot of referrals might come from your local health departments, um, especially those families who are enrolled in WIC um, you know, WIC services, um, as well as, um, hmm, what are some other referral, um, sources that you guys receive your referrals from? I know sometimes word of mouth. So those, those clients that you, you served before, uh, have a friend or a friend of a friend who is pregnant and they're like, oh my gosh, you've got to go see Regina. She's amazing. Exactly, yes. Those are actually some of the best. Uh, exactly. They're get. the ones that stay and like and they want to do the program. So um, just was wondering. Yeah, you know, the hardest part is really, is really marketing yourself and sharing all of the good things that, you know, um, encompass a home visit um, and sharing that like big mass production uh, in your community. So, it, you know, regardless of it being, you know, a, a hair salon that is doing the hair of a pregnant woman being, oh, you know what, I heard of this cool program, you know, that, uh, you know, you can receive some, you know, help and information, you know, during, you know, your pregnancy period and like, and really we do that. Yeah. that box. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, please feel free uh, to contact me, uh, provided my, uh, my email, uh, phone number, uh, really, if you have any questions, we uh, really want to hear from you uh, really during this process of um, really expanding, enhancing um, our universal uh, program so that we can refer those families into the um, more intensive uh, services that will help benefit them and their children in the long run. Uh, so with that, if there are no more questions, I think think we are almost to time, if not a little sooner, you get to start your break a little early. And um, Krista, is there anything else? Nope, we'll just see you back here at three o'clock for the next session. Thanks, Carrie, and thanks, everybody. Bye, guys.